welcome to this week's 172nd Air Wing video. We've got up for review Hobby Master's rendition of a Belgian Air Force F-104 Starfighter. This one is in the colors of the Belgian Air Force in serial number FX-52 out of Klein Brogel Air Base 10 Wing 310 Squadron. 1978 and of course as many of you will be probably well aware it's in a tiger color scheme to commemorate the nato tiger meet of that year but let's rewind a little bit um, let's talk about why i talk about the video uh, excuse me why i talk about the history of my model reviews so what i do on this channel is i review 170 second scale models and I will go into some detail about the history of the actual airplane that it's being rendered. And the reason I do that is to pay respects to the stories of the people involved because fighter jets don't fly in isolation, contrary to what you might think from Hollywood and Bollywood productions. Uh, flying a fighter jet is not as simple as just strapping on the plane, hitting the start button, kicking the tires, and lighting the fires. There are a team of people behind every airplane sortie that happens, whether that's military or civilian. And those people's stories are worth commemorating. And since Hollywood and Bollywood don't want to make a movie about the people who design, engineer, support, and uh, make these kind of fighter jets happen, I'll have to do my best here. So I don't have multi-million dollar budgets, so the sound design might not be up to par that you might see in a top uh, gun video. But here we are, right? So, with 170 second scale models being reviewed on a channel with 170 second scale of a Hollywood budget, actually far, far less than that, we'll get into the history of this F-104G. So this uh, aircraft was built by the Belgian company SABCA as a license produced F-104. One of the things that you may not realize are that not every Starfighter that you see is built by Lockheed. While Lockheed in the United States was the primary company that built the F-104 and designed it, it was not the only company by far to do so. What Lockheed did is they would license the F-104 design to other companies in other nations that operated the Starfighter. Now this served to be a win-win sort of process. By licensing production to local facilities, countries like Belgium could operate the F-104 fly them, build them, and not only have that transfer of technology and construction expertise, the nation of Belgium in this case would also benefit from having local production and logistics. So in the event of a cataclysmic war with the Warsaw Pact, Belgium could support and maintain their F-104s without needing to drop ship and airmail packages and parts and support and various things all the way from Lockheed's production facility, which at that time was in Palmdale, California. That's a very long trip to go from Palmdale, California to Klein Brogel in Belgium. So for both logistics and economics reasons, the F-104 design was licensed to SABCA of Belgium, which built their F-104s. This particular example was once again serial number FX-52. It was built in 1964 and adopted the same year by the Belgian Air Force. It would go on to serve for another 19 years, being retired in 1983 with over 3,026 hours of service. Unfortunately, that service was not as uneventful as you might hope. This uh, serial was involved in a mid-air collision with another F-104G. The other airplane tragically crashed. However, this one managed to get out of the situation with damage to one of the wings and one of the fuel tanks. It is a minor miracle that the pilot was able to recover an airplane uh, like this back to base with that much damage, considering that the F-104 in a non-damaged configuration is a rather tough airplane to land. And that's because the F-104 has a very high landing speed, which means your actions to put down the landing gear, flaps, and various other landing tasks have to be done much quicker and the airplane has to be handled much differently and uh, if any of these things are not done correctly you're going to have a starfighter shaped hole in the ground which is one of the reasons why this airplane had such a uh, terrible safety record during its time in the cold war although belgium was not the agency that bore the brunt of that 
that would have been the West German Air Force, which is mentioned in my earlier Starfighter video that I did on the TF-104 uh, that I did earlier uh, this year. So if you wanna check out that project video, I'll talk a little bit more about some of the logistics and organizational factors behind why Germany had such a terrible time with their F-104s to the point where they got such a reputation of being called the Widowmaker, which in all honesty is a little bit unfair to the crews and the people who flew that airplane safely throughout most of their careers. Uh, most of the issues that Germany had were solved by the mid 1960s and the people who flew the Starfighter between then and the type's retirement uh, didn't have that much more issues than any other Cold War fighter of the time in terms of safety. So uh, bear that in mind if you come across an article proclaiming the F-104 to be some giant deadly airplane. As with most things, uh, don't buy the hype, especially these days. So the aircraft was repaired after its mid-air collision and was repainted into this very fetching Tiger color scheme for the 1978 NATO Tiger meet. The NATO Tiger meets are, uh, you could say they are conventions between various NATO air forces to share tactics, trade stories, share booze, and uh, demonstrate skills over a series of various uh, training tasks and competitions. Uh, and each year, generally, the squadrons involved will put some sort of tiger-based sticker or emblem or paint scheme on their airplane. Generally, most air forces limit it to maybe the tail flash, or they might have a tiger-shaped uh, insignia somewhere on uh, maybe the the tail section of the airplane right about here, or maybe on the, the wing tanks or something like that. That's generally as far as they'll take it because air forces are run by governments and government ministers and generals and officials generally don't like flamboyant color schemes. Belgium, on the other hand, went a different course as we see here. And they painted the entire airplane part of the Tiger uh, color scheme, including the landing gear. So if you look at the intro footage, you'll see that the F-104G has yellow landing gear. And yes, I checked on this because I thought, hmm, this has to be some kind of error from Hobby Master to paint the entire landing gear yellow. Nope, that is legitimately what they use to paint the landing gear on the real airplane. So the F-104 FX-52 would be put on display in 1978 as one of the Belgian attendees to that year's Tiger meet. The aircraft would be retired in 1983, but Afterwards, it was restored to this color scheme for display in 2009's NATO Tiger Meet, which was also held at Kleinbrogel Air Base that year. So it is a pretty cool color scheme. In fact, it's so cool that it made an appearance in the Project Aces game Ace Combat 7. Uh, if you beat all of the storyline air combat missions in a rank of S, which is the top that you can score, for the game, uh, you get the Tiger Scheme unlocked, which is something that I have done, and it was hard, it was difficult, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times, you know the drill. Uh, perhaps there were better things I could have done for my summer in 2019, but hey, uh, good news is now I have this really cool screenshot of uh, my gameplay that now, all these years later, finally has a practical purpose. So all the people who say that video games don't get you anywhere, well, don't listen to them. Sometimes it pays off. With all that laid out, we'll jump into some of the pros and cons of this model and why potentially you might want to add it to your collection. So the pros, I have to say that the color scheme is very well executed. We don't have any flaws really with the definition of the tiger stripes, especially on the bottom, which I feared might be a little messy. Thankfully, that's not the case. The small parts and the gear doors and the various other small components are properly rendered in the Tiger color scheme. The cockpit and the canopy match up to the, the fuselage, so we don't see any you know, misalignments with the canopy and the fuselage and all those sorts of things. So overall, I'm really glad Hobby Master nailed that. Uh, I'm also glad to see that they did include fuel tanks, the wingtip tanks here and here, which are of course included because Without those fuel tanks, um, realistically, your fuel time in this airplane is going to be measured in minutes. Uh, the F-104 is a great performing airplane, but if you are aggressive with the throttle, you won't be flying very long. So 
um, yeah, I'm glad to see that they rendered that very well. Notice the pitot tube right here, which measures airspeed and provides data to the airplane's avionics to show the uh, aircraft's uh, airspeed and other various vital data. Um, that is rendered accurately as well with a barber pole black and white, excuse me, black and uh, black and yellow tiger stripe rendering. Uh, all in all, it is, it is striking. And as much justice as I can do with this in 2K footage, it is that much better in full person. So um, yeah, it is cool. And if you're a fan of tigers or tiger stripe color schemes or any kind of really special ones, you can just stop right here and get your credit card out and buy it because it is just that lit. Um, Another pro I'm glad to share is that the landing gear can be displayed with the wheels up or down um, as, and the cockpit is very well rendered as well. So when you have it displayed on the ground, the cockpit detail is very well done and is relatively accurate to what you would expect the Starfighter's cockpit to look like. Uh, some of the cons, uh, the first con is going to be the small parts are fairly fiddly. You get a lot of little itty bitty parts that go on the bottom of the airplane for the landing gear, which actually is fairly true to life. The actual F-104 has a lot of very small parts for the landing gear and the doors. And famously, uh, Clarence Kelly Johnson, the engineer of this airplane back in the 1950s, uh, realized that there wasn't enough clearance between the landing gear doors and the gear when the landing gear was down. So instead of trying to redesign the landing gear so it fit flush and that kind of thing, he just set it up so that when the landing gear is open and down, the doors don't close all the way. So if you have it displayed with the gear down, you'll notice that the doors do not, they don't close all the way and that is normal. So if you display it with the gear down, that is not an error or any kind of problem. You're not doing it wrong. There's supposed to be a gap between the frame of the airplane and the landing gear door on both sides. So just bear that in mind if and when you do decide to display your Hobby Master F-104 in the gear down position. So there's just a lot of small parts and sometimes the tolerances can vary. This F-104 isn't an issue, but I do have another one from Hobby Master. That's the Norwegian Air Force one. And it, um, yeah, it's, it's a little, I had to sand that one down a bit to get the doors to fit because it's just tricky as all get out. But this one, I'm glad to say, was dialed in and fairly simple to install. Um, there's just a lot of little bitty parts, so bear that in mind. Um, it's not like the later releases Hobby Master's done where you have one piece that goes in. It's uh, lots of little bitty parts. So if you have a set of needle nose uh, tweezers or pliers, pliers, uh, needle nose tweezers, you should be fine. Otherwise, uh, I would recommend getting just because it's going to be a bit fussy to put the landing gear up and down on this one. And the other miss, unfortunately, they didn't put weapons in the kit, which I understand. Uh, it's a demo bird. It didn't necessarily um, have weapons when it was on display in 1978 or 2009. But it would have been nice to see like the Catamaran AIM-9B uh, or AIM-9J set up down here. That would have been good to see. Um, they they could have had the wing pylons where you have a, maybe a fuel tank here, although I would have more preferred to see the catamaran with the AIM-9s on the bottom. That would have just given this thing a little bit of punch and given the owner a bit of an option to display it in uh, kind of a fangs out, ready to take care of business configuration, you know? So I would have liked to see that. It wouldn't have been to me a big deal, you know, because if it's a demo bird, you want to model it without the weapon. You just wouldn't put it on the airplane. And it would have been nice to see the little catamaran set up on there. Um, I also think that F-104s look pretty badass with that, but that's just me. So those are minor misses. All things considered, I would think this is a solid option to add to your collection. At this time, they are selling for relatively reasonable prices. So you can get them at, again, fairly competitive pricing. Although if you watch this months or years later, perhaps that situation will have changed. But at this time, it's a good value. So if you want to get one in proximity to winter of 2024, you certainly check it out. I think it'd be a worthwhile addition to your collection. And all things considered, it's a nice little piece of history. You can get a a commemorative airplane showing the Tiger Meet from 1978 and 2009, which is kind of unusual. Most airplanes are only commemorative for one or two consecutive periods. This one starred in two uh, Tiger Meets separated by decades. So that's kind of an interesting story. And it's an F-104 that survived a mid-air collision. 
not very many of those out there. So thank you for watching this week's review. Stay tuned for upcoming content. I've got some videos planned for the rest of the year. If you would like to be notified when I do publish new content, consider subscribing. Not only would that give you the option to be notified when you click the bell icon, that's also a measure of support and tells me and the YouTube algorithm gods that I'm doing a good job. So um, for those who are subscribed to my channel, I extend my appreciation and thank you. And I'll also take a moment to extend my thanks to the uh, loved one that got this for me for Christmas. Um, you know who you are and I extend my deepest and infinite appreciation to you for this and every other gift that you've brought to my life. So with that, we will conclude this week's video. Again, stay tuned for upcoming content. And if you like this review, consider checking out my other videos. I've reviewed all of the, uh, not all of the airplanes in my collection, but I've reviewed quite a few over the years of 172nd scale models that have made their way into my collection. I am not a storefront, nor do I sell these professionally. So everything that you see is from my own money except this one, ironically, because it was a gift. But um, the other ones aside, uh, they are all models that were purchased. So the impressions that you hear are not biased or altered or uh, influenced by any associations with other companies or manufacturers. And I wanna make that clear because we live in the internet world where uh, people generally are not upfront about such things. So that's worth understanding so that you know that the words that I'm saying about this model are from the perspective of a collector, not somebody with a financial interest in saying something good, bad, or otherwise about a, a manufacturer, model, series, etc., etc. So we'll conclude today's video here. Catch it in the next one.